Hi, this is Phil Chandler on a wet and windy day up on Dartmoor. One of my apiaries here, and I'm just coming across a problem here with a Payne style um, nuke, poly nuke. Uh, these things I love to bits most of the time. They, they do a great job uh, when I'm moving bees around and um, using them for, for queen mate rearing and stuff like that, but. Um, they do have this problem, or at least I don't, I'm not blaming the hive itself or the, or the new design itself, but it's, it's just a, a problem with um, top feeders in general, I think, that um, bees find them rather cold places to come to in the winter when you've got this kind of arrangement here with the, um, this is a perspex cover you can see in the centre. This is the standard arrangement. So the bees have to come up the centre, and you can see them running around in there. They have to come up the centre, down the side, and then out into the into the feed area. The, 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 this area here. This has just got some remnants of uh, fondant this side, and there's a load of fondant this side. Now, you can see there are well, there's a couple of dead bees, and this is this is the problem. You see, this is why I have a, an issue here because I think bees get into this area here. They start feeding on the um, fondant and they get cold, they get chilled and they actually die before they have a chance to get back into the warmth of the hive. Now I guess a certain amount of heat must come up from the below because um, you know it's a free passage of air through there but I think it's probably not enough and so for, feed, for, for solid feeding purposes um, in the winter my idea is to make a hole in the center of this of one of these sides um, so what I'll do is reserve this side for feeding fondant and I'll keep that side for feeding liquids so what I'm suggesting is I'm going to drill a hole in this in the straight through the base of this uh, feeder here it's actually pouring with rain now um, and then the bees will be able to come up directly into this feeding area uh, without getting cold because they'll bring a bit of heat up through the hole with them and then I'll put a you know the standard um, perspex, uh, sorry sorry, it's not perspex, it's an acetate style cover over the top here and then the lid on top and I line my lids as you can see with um, Reflectix which helps keep the heat in so there's a little bit more insulation it has the um, less than desirable effect perhaps of lifting the lid very slightly around the edge so it doesn't close quite as tightly as before but I always strap my uh, lids down so I don't think that's, that's really a problem because you still get an airtight seal. So that's the plan um, to drill a hole. Now obviously there's bees in this hive so I'm going to have to do some um, uh, little juggling here to, to drill a hole safely without disrupting the bees too much and without getting a face full of bees. Um, as I say it's pouring with rain now so I might just take a little break before I attempt this but I'll come back. So there you go there's the final result. I didn't uh, video the drilling the hole bit because it was uh, impossible to hold a drill um, the, the feeder itself and the camera with only two hands so but you can see the bees are now coming up through the hole very easily very happily gorging themselves on fondant and there's still loads of bees crowded into the um, perspex cover here but really quite unable to get into the uh, feed area. You can see actually there's one bee there that's just kind of struggling to reach some food I'm just going to help her along, I'm just going to grab my knife and um, create a space but this is, a, this is a, an issue with these things, They're, they do seem to have a problem with this gap under the under the edge here. I'm just going to carefully insert a knife and turn it so as to release this bee from being trapped. No, that's not that's not working. So I'm going to put my knife under there and lever up slightly. There we go. That's created a bit more space. Um, she can actually get to. There's a bit of fondant there. She can actually reach without coming under. But she's reluctant to come underneath completely and you can see they've they've actually put some wax along here which suggests that 
you know, given B space is defined as the, 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 the space which the bees won't fill either with propolis or with wax, that means that this must be less than B space. And so I'm suggesting that this is a potential issue. This um, perspex here is flush with the top, which is really the only place it can be. Um, I mean, it could be cranked up a little bit, I suppose. But even then, the bees seem reluctant to come down and into the cold of the feeder. Evict the, the dead bee there. So I'm hoping that this is a, provides a solution that maybe other people can use. I can still use this side of the feeder for liquid should I need to or want to, um, but this side is now much better, I think, for feeding fondant. Um, the bees can come up without getting cold. And obviously the test of this will be, you know, do they continue to use it over time? But I'm just going to put the um, acetate back on now, plus the layer of Reflectix, which helps to keep the heat in. Um, and the normal lid. So there we go, I'm going to strap that down and that should be good for the winter. They'll probably need a bit, a bit more food. I mean, the great thing about these with a, with a clear top on is that you can just lift the lid off and check that they've got food, which you can't do using the um, side feeder. Uh, this, is, this has got a double brood set up over winter with a, with a top feeder on. If, you, if I was to use the side feeder on these, which is you know, just in here, um, I wouldn't be able to tell at any point whether they had food or not without actually dismantling the hive and obviously in the middle of winter you don't want to be doing that so that's why I prefer to use a top feeder in the first place and I'm hoping that this modification that I've just showed you is uh, potentially useful to, to some people and um, I think it's uh, something I'm going to be doing on most of my other nukes if not all of them. Just to demonstrate the difference uh, between the top feeder and side feeder, here is a similar setup. Uh, this time it's on a, a stand, but it's another double brood setup. And I can lift the Reflectix off, and you can see I'm looking now directly into the top frames here. And I know there's, there's plenty of honey on them, so I'm not worried about them. But if I was to use the side feeder, um, Here's the side feeder, I'm looking down. I can actually see now that there's, there's um, some fondant at the bottom of it, but there's also a bit of a pile of dead bees. Now again, I think this is a problem with feeding fondant in the side feeder in winter, because in order to get to it, the bees have got to break cluster. Now you can see there's some bees come up now from below to find out where all the light's coming from. Um, and so yeah, so the problem is I, I, it's, it's relatively easy in this particular case to see down inside um, the state of the food, but if I put fondant in there, I'm risking uh, the bees not being able to get to it without freezing, and it looks like there's you know, a few dead bees down there already. So while those feeders may, may be okay to use in the summer, I don't think they're great for the winter. So this particular hive I'm going to uh, they're, they're okay, again, because I say this, this top box is virtually all honey, um, but if I wanted to supplement that with fondant, I would need to put a, a feeder right on the top here, in preference to on the side.